We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available on Amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. Um, this is I'm not even sure what episode we're on. I think it's 52 or something like that. But anyway, uh, doing this uh, outdoors because I don't have a studio right now. And uh, reason being is we just moved our location from Arizona to Central Oregon. And uh, so we're going to do this from the yard. And uh, uh, so bear with me. So you can uh, catch uh, Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, which is goodtalkradio.com, and uh, uh, also on Spreaker and many other platforms. Just go to the description below, and uh, uh, you can find us there. And uh, so I got to put up with distractions like a couple of dogs that think they're warriors. But today I wanted to talk about <clears throat> uh, Glenn Beck. And he just did a video about how come Americans are being so silent. And uh, <clears throat> and what he's talking about is so much is going on that uh, <laughs> uh, from statues being pulled down to riots to protesting to craziness of this COVID-19 stuff. Um, and uh, our history... Our cities are being destroyed just by a, a small percentage of people. It's really a small percentage. It's not, it sounds like it's more, but it's the media. I don't understand why the media is so determined to help promote destruction of our country. My guess it has to do with money and, and ratings. Uh, because really, uh, one of the protests went after CNN and uh, a lot of folks in the media have been attacked and beaten up and hurt and uh, I think they're a little confused I think there's a lot of confused people and so uh, Glenn Beck just did a show I shared it on a lot of our platforms um, this, it's like wake up America why aren't we standing up why aren't we as patriots saying no to this stuff and he's got a good point and uh i know why i'm the same way it's like all right do i want to stick my neck out do i want these little one or two percent of crazy liberals bugging me and my family am i going to live in fear like that and the answer is i shouldn't and then there's the uh biblical side of things our creator at this time, uh, the Bible has described all of this, and it really says to be uh, a good person, believe in your Creator more than ever, talk about your Creator, and you'll be all right. And uh, a good example is my uh, sis daughter-in-law. One of her biggest worries, one of her things that are scare, scaring her is what about my kids her kids are like 11 years old and maybe f five or six and it's like this insanity is going on how can I protect my kids and my answer to that is um, te teach them empathy teach them to be good people and learn how to work hard and they are and uh, most of all Teach them about God. Teach them what you know and then try to help them grow. Because the uh, Bible describes that all this stuff is going to happen. And those of us who are Christians, those of us with faith and believe in a Creator and repent, uh, things will go okay for us. Uh, it's This is all meant to be, unfortunately. So, uh, <laughs> anyway. That's the answer I have for that. But in the meantime, do you speak out? 
do you uh, say enough is enough? Do we defend things? Will we have to fight? And that's, you know, it's easy to say that. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, they're coming to my yard, they're dead. <laughs> that's not going to, it's a lot more complicated in this world. I look at Seattle. They just walked in, took six blocks, and not a gunshot was heard. Why? Because the, the police were afraid to do anything because everybody's out to get them. So they just walked in and took the area, and their leadership says, oh, let them have it. And uh, that's what I mean by there's leaders right now that are afraid to step up. They're afraid of their ratings. They're afraid of not getting reelected. They're afraid of fe people's feelings. And the thing is, we can't continue to live on feelings and emotions. It's insane. It's just uh, not the right thing to do. It's time for patriots. It's time for leaders to get tough and make the tough decisions. Um, all of us do. Do we say no? Do we uh, mention in, in any kind of social media that you're opposed to something? Or are you afraid you're going to hurt someone's feelings? <clears throat> and let's go ahead and talk about racism. So, as I grew up, uh, in the Seattle area and worked at a big aerospace company we had a lot of diversified people and uh, we just coexisted we all did our thing um, we really didn't have any the only time that something like race would come up is occasionally you'd be kind of a rebel kind of person who might not be necessarily in the Caucasian area that would just be hung up on that and then cause issues. But most of the time we all worked hand in hand and uh, a lot of people I worked with and some of them, I was a manager and some of my leads and stuff, we were actually really good friends. We actually did things together after working this, uh, etc. No big deal. I mean, it sounds like I shouldn't even have to talk about this because we never thought anything about it. It's not till the last six months that now I look and actually see skin color. And I never did that before. It didn't matter. And I'm still trying to make sure it doesn't matter. But the media, the Black Lives Matter, these organizations, they're pushing it and making us try to be divided. My suggestion to you and myself is ignore them and just go about treating people like people. I'm sorry, but I'm going to say all lives matter. And uh, I am tired of other people, other organizations and news media telling me I have to act different because someone's skin color is different. Yeah, I know, I'm white privileged, they, call, they say. But, you know, I've... I've seen a lot of crap in my life. It wasn't, didn't feel very privileged then, I'm sure. Um, I really think the character of the person is so much impo more important than the character of a skin. It has no leverage whatsoever of why uh, your race would make things any different. I think it's all about your integrity, being a good person. If I'm prejudiced against anybody, be stupid people. And there's a lot of it. And uh, the Bible even says, because if you watch some of these news things like, we can't eat Rice Krispies anymore, or Aunt Jemima waffles, there's actually quite a, a story about uh, that lady, uh, which was a good thing. Pulling down statues of George Washington. Um, it's insane. And the Bible says that at a certain point, those who are not on board, those are, aren't believers, are going to be, their hearts will be hardened. Which means they'll believe the lie. And a lie is, we're not all racist. Did I say that right? <laughs> 
yeah, people are uh, uh, trying to make us all out to be racist. Whether if I'm like for me being white, they say there's no way that I could not be racist. Or if I'm a uh, conservative, I must be racist. Or I support Trump, I must be racist. What? <laughs> I support like Trump because I like what he does for business and I like he believes in, in God we trust and he does talk about our creator and uh, uh, generally he's doing the things that we need to do to get our country back in line. We can't keep giving things away and the border thing we can't, it sounds nice to just give everybody health coverage that comes over to our country or um, and then pay their wages and, and give them a, uh, extra money. The thing is, it's coming out of our coffers. And by the way, tell me a country where you, you can go across to any country and just be, start living and start getting health care and start getting a, a income, um, schooling, anything you want when you go to another country. I can't think of any of them that don't have uh, <laughs> a rule. I, I'm seeing I have two dogs getting in trouble here. Um, drop it. Hey. <laughs> She's a puppy, by the way. Belle, stop. Leave it. Leave it. Leave gonna be one of those days <laughs> guess I'm gonna have to get be a patriot and really get tough huh anyway <clears throat> so what we're talking about it's nice to have a distraction so we're talking about being a patriot being strong will it be a time that we have to stand up do we have the backbone to do it what would it take for us to go over to the other edge, to the edge and get defensive, start standing up for our beliefs <clears throat> to protect our country. And the problem is, is our law of society. So what would happen if someone came to my gates and started to, uh, let's say a group of five or 10 Atifa folks try to take over my neighborhood and they come on my property and I defend it. What happens to me? There's the fear. We need to get past that fear somehow. And we also need, to, you know, nothing's worse, nothing's better than the enemy knowing that you're possibly going to do something about it. That's a deterrent. So are we going to let uh, people destroy our cities? destroy our businesses. Do you have any comprehension what it's like to own a business? Do you know somebody owns a business? And someone just comes along and they don't care what color you are and destroys it or burns it to the ground like one I don't remember what city it was somebody got uh, killed by a policeman so they burned down the Wendy's what the hell does that have to do with that? And think about the guy who owns that and all those employees. That's insanity. That is insane. How could that possibly be right? So when when do we say enough? I'm a, all you, cr you know, crazy liberals out there. I guess that's what extreme is. I have no problem with someone who's a Democrat. I have no problem with someone who's a Republican. And we all have some of the same things we want. And yet we got these way off to the left or way off to the right people that seem to be getting all the attention and doing whatever they do damn well please so wrong how do we how do we bring them in and how do we get the media to start realizing they're destroying us 
why are we letting them destroy us? So if you've noticed, I'm taking action for my family by getting out of the city. And uh, I'm going to go steal that piece of paper my dog was getting. We moved away from the city and moved out to the country, as you can see. Why? Why would I do that? Well, one of the things I've been talking about constantly <laughs> is, uh, yes, I guess some cute little puppies here, is being self-reliant. Um, I need more room to grow more food. Does that look like enough room? You got five acres. If you look, now you can't see it, but over by the cars over there, we have our own well. Now this year I'll make some modifications to either run the well by itself with a generator off the grid, or I'll put a manual pump in the pump house where I can actually extract water just by pumping. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about my water supply. And if I can get more self-reliant on my own food, then my trips to the city will be minimal. And that's my plan. In case things really get crazy. Um, invested a little bit more into freezers. And probably the next thing I'm going to do is make sure and... Uh, um, pull up a solar array that can run my freezers. As far as light and things like that, candles and uh, the little oil lamps and stuff were fine. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's my plan. And I have weapons. And I have ammunition. And uh, I won't talk too much more about that. Other than the fact, in case this gets so crazy, do I actually have to think about that? I can't believe that. Could I actually do it? Could I actually defend my property? What would it take for me to cross that, that line? And could you do it? Or would you just let everybody take your stuff? And when you say stuff like your food, your transportation, or your fuel, would you do that? Could you do it? Could you defend your property? It's a little different out here in the country. I feel different about I actually have some security here. Um, actually, you notice my properties uh, now circular uh, have a. Uh, eight foot fence. The reason we have it is not for people. It's because of the deer. But I got five acres here to plant stuff, grow stuff. I have a water system. If I can uh, set up a bypass on the on our well over here, I can continue to um, water this entire property just for my well. But, uh, I know, guys, I just love to hear your opinion. Like, are you, are you getting fed up? Or are you just going to let it happen? It is what it is. Or are you going to start standing up and saying something? That's really what I'm talking about is, are we going to be silent? I, um, probably stick my neck out too much already just with these videos but what are you doing are you engaging are you protesting are you protesting the protesters are I don't I, I, I just I'm curious do you really think it's right for people to destroy other people's businesses and destroy government property I don't think all Amer I think a lot of Americans are just not speaking up. Sorry, my camera's a little dusty, and uh, I'm sure you'll see specks in my lens because I see a little dust on there. 
but uh yeah um are you prepping so uh i can tell you one thing when it comes to the word when it comes to prepping is thank gosh i did some now i was a little surprised how my prepping helped me with the covid turns out the the paper products that we bought ahead of time um, really came in handy and then there's other things I didn't anticipate that caught me off guard and if you hear the wind I'm a, I apologize it was a light wind but um are you prepared for the grid to go down can you survive I'm not really I think if shit hit the fan I mean really bad you may just want to die <laughs> but if something temporary happens for a couple of months how well how well would you do do you have extra water do you uh, have extra food how about some of those uh, dried foods that you can buy and get a couple maybe a month or two set aside it's actually cheaper to go to the grocery store and get some of your own um, stuff and then jar them yourself or bag them yourself and uh, do you have anything to cook with like I use Coleman stoves um, the kind you use for camping and I have a large supply of uh, propane that would definitely get us through many many months to be able to at least heat up water and all the basics I would need to do for cooking. Um, Meat-wise, that's kind of different. Uh, a lot of I do have a lot of freeze-dried meat-type products in canned meats. Um, but um, uh, I'm not opposed to being <coughs> more vegan. Uh, I've I've been vegan before, and uh, did really well. So. Those are just ideas of what to do for your prepping. But do you even prep? Yeah, I'm going to turn this so you can see these dogs playing. This German Shepherd over here, by the way, he loves to chase butterflies. So I'm giving away my security dog is not so secure. <laughs> she just looks like a German Shepherd, but she's a giant kid that chases butterflies. So anyway, uh... I'd just love to hear your opinion and comments about how you feel about what's going on. Are you going to step out of the shadows? Are you going to speak out? Are you going to defend our country? I'm not saying getting, you know, going into the military or something. What happens if you have to defend where you live? Uh, I was more worried about it when I lived in uh, Arizona because I was more in the city. Here, um, there's much more community but a lot of rednecks too. Uh, there's tough people here, but uh, we're in the Bend, Oregon area. There's certain areas that have some of these leftists still doing protests here and causing problems. There's a little town called Prineville, literally surprised of how they've actually had a little bit of violence in some of their uh, protests there, and it's a little town. Like, really? It's like a little town trying hard to be a big town. <laughs> uh, I'm a big town now. Not going to happen. But, uh, protesting for, you know, uh, equality and, and diversity is good. Nothing wrong with that. But rioting and destroying things? Not right. Not right at all. And, uh, these poor people that have businesses. Once again, I'm just uh, shocked that we're all standing by and letting this happen. And in uh, in Seattle, there's literally that six blocks that uh, the cops aren't even going in. And another a business got burnt down the other day. And they just stood there and watched it because they're not letting the police come in and enforce anything. What about all the residents that live in there? There's a lot. Um, how would you feel how would you feel if you live there and the city abandoned you and let a bunch of strangers take over the, the block 
I'm giving you free entertainment over here. Um, oh, butterfly. <laughs> She's literally got a butterfly over here. She sees it. There she goes. <laughs> She's literally chasing a butterfly. <laughs> she still is. <laughs> Pretty fearsome warrior, huh? Good thing I got a German Shepherd to protect my property. <laughs> no, no butterfly is safe in this property. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, for those of you who are listening to the podcast or the audio version of this, there is a video version of this. Um, it is all voice. I'm not using any slides, so uh, you're not missing out <laughs> unless you want to see my beautiful face. Um, <laughs> if you notice, I'm starting to look more redneck than before. <laughs> it's like, I used to live here before. I actually used to, I used to have my own game bird farm. And so uh, I kind of miss being a, a redneck, a roughneck, whatever you want to call it. And uh, getting my hands dirty and working. I am so sore from the chores I've done so far that I'm really happy about that because I need to lose weight. And two is I've been living in the city and the highlight of my life was sitting in front of a pool. Well, that's gone. Now it's <laughs> working on tractors. Um, moving in here is really something else. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, but I do want to thank you guys very much for listening to Easy Street. Figured I'd give you kind of a different version of what I normally do and use a, a small camera and do Easy Street this way. Um, anyway, please take the time to say hello. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent uh, in the comments. Please uh, be professional. And uh, it's okay. You don't have to agree with me. That's how we used to be. But we did it calmly. <clears throat> and uh, maybe we all want to just burn down the, the country. I don't think so. And uh, uh, I know a lot of us don't like Trump as a personal person, as a person. But we do like what he's doing for our country. And that's why we support him. So, uh, anyway. Guys, please be safe out there. <clears throat> please think all this stuff over. Plan a little. Be prepared. Be accountable. And try to be more self-reliant. Just in case this goes over the edge. Remember, we're not the only country with this problem. And, uh, we may all have to toughen up a little bit. And are you ready for that? Or what are you going to do? You can't, when the government's not there to save us, what are you going to do? Anyway, guys, thanks again. Tune in, watch, uh, listen to Good Talk Radio. You can find Easy Street on there uh, every day. Uh, just go to the schedule on goodtalkradio.com and you'll find us there. So be safe. Learn a little bit about God. Read up on what's going on because all of this has been documented. And it tells you, as a Christian, what we're supposed to be doing. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.